What do you think about the class so far? Yeah, it's amazing. I never imagined or how these things can be done by the people without any experience. Thank you for the opportunity to have the kids learning from somebody with experience. Thank you. So today, what I'm going to talk about is figure out how ChatGPT works. Why do we need a vast amount of data? We can always just ask ChatGPT. Hey, can we try that? That's the basic to understand human language. That's all that is. And this whole thing is called a supervised machine learning. So how does supervised machine learning work? So this phase here is called a training phase. Basically saying, let's cover part of the data. Your job here is just predict what the next word is. Get it? I want to stop a little bit and see if you understood me. Neural networks. So what are you seeing here is a neuron. And each connection, there are all kinds of neurotransmitters. You guys heard about dopamine, for example. Each arrow here is basically one connection. The neural network is nothing but a giant nonlinear function. Self-attention mechanism is basically which are the words I must pay attention in order for me to predict what's the next word. What does alignment mean? I'm sure it's like morals are properly aligned with like what the world sees as acceptable. Can we give Raghi a round of applause? Why he's so accurate? That's that's correct. Yeah, because because yeah, it can say crazy things. Just like for example, the internet has all kinds of crazy stuff, right? We have to comprehend everything AI is mm -hmm. telling us because your job is not a copy and a paste. Your job is being an editor for the AI. Direct it understand it, make a modification, make it yours. So I just want to welcome all the parents, uh, family members who are supporting. By the way, this is my first time teaching AI Sandbox, which is basically which is AI to teach these students how to make art. But the goal is for them to become super learners so that they can use AI to supercharge their learning journey ahead. Think about how many years these guys will be ahead if they can be exposed to how to learn and all the best practices in the industry, we as parents and educators, it's really about giving them the choices, giving them the option, let them try it, right? And see mm -hmm. how it goes. We see so many great students. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, if you ask them, hey, where did you learn your stuff? It's like internet, right? Mm -hmm. And I hope the new generation and, you know, these, you know, five, six students are the first generation that they are going to start learning, you know, using AI itself. Introduce yourself a little bit and then talk about the video you made. Um, my name is Gergi. I'm 17. My name is Nina. I'm 15. Our project is basically just on technology and how it influenced the piano. All right. In the late 17th and early 18th centuries, various keyboard instruments existed, but had many limitations. In the early 19th century, innovators rapidly transformed the piano with new technology to add better sound quality and playability. Electrification entered piano technology leading to further advancements, digital sampling technology revolutionized piano production. The modern piano offers greater tonal breadth and depth. Digital pianos further allow more sounds to be simulated, like string instruments. All right. Woo! Okay. Ooh. Awesome. Good job. Let's give it a round of applause. I have a question for all the parents. Once you see that video and the video has script, has image, it has music and also has captions. Out of all these things, what's the percentage you think is AI generated? If I didn't know that they're at this class, I would have said like right. they did everything. They did everything, right. I can 50%. Point. 50%, 40%, yeah. okay. 40% by AI. What about for Mia's parents? 60%. 60%, 60%. I guess Mia and Groggy, can you break the news to, to your parents? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> All of it? All of it. Yeah. All of it. All of it. How long you guys think it's going to do another one? Two hours. How long do you think it's going to take? By yourself. Ten, maybe. Ten if you want to be good, yeah. Yeah, right? So basically, if you do it with the AI, it can increase the speed by five times. Do you guys see the power now? 
can we give a round of applause for Mia and Groggy for your demo? Hey, that's awesome, right? Chantal, I'm 13 and I'm from California. Hi, my name is Richard. It's really Ch Chantel's show. I just kind of supported it with wherever I could. Chantel, please present uh, what you have made. Norma McCorvey, known as Jane Roe, played a significant role in Roe v. Wade, the landmark 1973 Supreme Court case that recognized a woman's constitutional right to choose abortion. Ongoing debates, legal challenges, and attempts to restrict or overturn the decision continue to make the future of abortion rights uncertain. A profound impact on society. It legalized abortion, sparked debates, empowered women's reproductive autonomy, improved access to safe procedures, and shaped the political landscape and public opinion surrounding abortion rights. So let's give a round of applause for Town or Richard, you know, for you know for this whole thing. Vivian and Christina, you can show yours. Yep. I am Chris. I'm going into my senior year of high school. Uh, I'm Vivian. I'm going to eighth grade. Cool. So guys, take away the stage. Bring the art of pranking dates back to ancient civilizations, where mischievous acts brought joy and laughter. Folk tales and mythologies from various cultures feature mischievous tricksters like Loki from Norse mythology, known for cunning tricks, and Anansi from West African folklore, a clever spider who outwits others with deceit. As the 18th and 19th centuries rolled in, practical jokes and hoaxes thrived, capitalizing on societal changes, scientific discoveries, and mass media's rise. Nowadays, the digital realm has taken pranks to new heights, offering diverse audiences worldwide a wide range of pranks, from text-based jokes to elaborate multimedia setups. Now, Mia and Gragi, if you talk about one thing that's really memorable, what would that be? It's easier than I thought it'd be. And it, all these resources are available now to make our lives easier. To make your life easier. All right, cool. AI can supercharge your intelligence. ChatGPT is really helpful and it really does help make things easier because like from school, um, I was really told like not to use it and that it like, it was kind of like cheating, but then like yeah. here and now it's like, I actually like using it. It's kind of like surprising like how much you could do in like such a short amount of time because like if we did this by hand, it would take like a really long time. Like, the AI just like did all of it for you. So do you think ChatGPT will go away? Not a chance, right? And so it's really about utilizing it correctly. What is the chance you're going to use AI in your future? Whether it's like for learning, you know, for helping you? Oh, definitely like 100%, honestly. 100%? Yeah. yeah. I've learned a lot and, you know, it's very interesting the way it presents information to me. 90%. 90%. What, what is the most immediate use? For you? Probably chat GPT. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. If we don't learn how to use this, right, we would be behind. I think this might be the beginning, you know, for thousands of students learning about this. Hey, I hope this is going to be a transformational class for you. Because what I hope you realize is how powerful AI is. And you can incorporate that in your daily routine right, in your daily routine. Right now, when I'm working, every day I'm using AI to help me to think clearer, to communicate better, to plan better, et cetera. I hope you do the same, utilizing AI as a tool for you to learn. I just wanna say, hey, congrats, okay? Now, I hope you can take AI with you that make you become five times more efficient, okay? That's it.